Come on now, people. I've been telling you for almost two years now, you need to have a GNR TV. And now sports are back. Football is back. Now is the perfect time for you to get this if you don't have it already. And if you look on over here, as I've been telling you before, you get all these amazing channels, every single one of them, for $20 a month for two devices. And if you look on up over here, it's written. It's written everything you get with GNR TV. If you want four devices, $40. And there's some cool extras right here. GNR TV, streaming done right. If you don't have it, get it. What more can I say? What more can I say? It's time to cut the damn cord, stop being ripped off by the dish and cable, and get this lovely thing we call GNR TV. Streaming done right. Let's get slicing and dicing with Sir Sturdy Horror fans. On this podcast, you will hear me and a guest do some movie reviews, random funny horror chats, and whatever else comes to mind. So tune in, kick back, relax, and always remember, I'll see you in your nightmares. Well, this Jason's mask. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of Horror with Sir Sturdy. As you guys know, I'm your host, Sir Sturdy, and today, my guest, Tony. Tony, how you doing, man? Hey, good. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on here. And I'm, I apologize for switching the days from yesterday to today. I'm, I'm going to give you the reason why, too. I'm a big muscle car guy. I love drag racing. I have an 87 Trans Am. I have a 71 Camaro that's not ready yet, but I have a Trans Am. And my father, he's bringing out his uh, 06 GTO to the track tomorrow to make some passes with it. And I'm like, I've always wanted to make passes with my father. They're going, you know, being in separate lanes, going down the track together. And he's going. It's a nice, it just happens to be a nice weekend. Like this weekend's a nice, I brought my car out two weeks ago. He said he's going to bring out his car in two weeks, as long as it's nice. It's going to be like 78, 80 degrees. So it's going to be a really nice day to do it. And I'm just like, Okay, let me just make sure my guest is cool with moving this <laughs> just a day back. <laughs> but yeah, I just I was just like, all right, because there was like no emergency. I didn't say there was emergency. I was asked if we can switch it, but there's like nothing crazy going on. I'm just like, this is like one of those things like I, I have to do in a sense. You know what I mean? Oh, for sure. So I appreciate you not minding going, you know, doing a day earlier. Oh, for sure. <laughs> but um, so uh, how is everything? Like what got you... What got you into this genre? Who or what got you into this genre? And then, like, what movie scared you as a kid, if any? Like, the first movie you can remember that scared you? Gotcha. So, um, I'm not really sure what exactly attracted me to horror immediately as a kid. I mean, like, a lot of kids, I was into dinosaurs and just monsters and Halloween. and Yeah. Um, one moment that really sticks out kind of – deep with me though was watching Frankenstein on television as a kid and first seeing that on TV and just completely falling in love with the Frankenstein character, you know, Frankenstein's monster. Yeah. And, uh, I think the real big game changer for me was when my family got a VCR and, uh, you know, we were able to rent movies. And so I was always attracted to the horror movie section and all of that. And, um, at one point, my mom was uh, kind of trying out some different, uh, you know, employment type things. And her and a friend had bought out a, the stock of a video store. And so they were selling them at the swap meet. And I remember my mom, she's like, she's like, you can pick out one tape, you know, and, and you can have it at, at the end of the day, as long as you're good and stay out of trouble and all that kind of stuff. So I remember going through all the tapes and I, the, the, the movie that first caught my eye was Dawn of the Dead. You know, that old Thorn EMI clamshell of Dawn of the Dead. And I was like, I want this one. <laughs> and uh, sadly, someone bought it that day. So I had to go with my second pick, which was uh, Troll. And uh, I'd say that's a great uh, gateway uh, film for kids getting into horror. Mm -hmm. And after that, I mean, that was my first VHS. And after that, I just started collecting and just got crazy. You know, one video store membership became two, became three, became four, <laughs> became five. 
Next thing you know, you know, I'm begging mom to drive me halfway across town to check out a different video store, you know, to try to see more movies that I hadn't seen before. So pretty much once it started, once I started collecting as, and, and that's probably around like seven or so, mm-hmm. once I started collecting, it was game over. My life was dedicated to horror. That's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. See, with me, as far as getting into it, it was between the ages of five and seven. And at the time I was the youngest, like it was my older brother, one of my older brothers um, and my older cousins. And they're all into horror. They were into horror, not as much as I am now, but they were all into horror, you know, getting horror movies and stuff as like kids slash young teens for some of them. And they were allowed to watch it because they were older, of course. I wasn't, but they let me hang around and watch them. Their thing was, as long as you don't wake up mom or aunt so-and-so, depending on whose house it was, because you're going to get us all beat if you wake them up because you're scared of these movies, <laughs> then you can watch them with us. And yes, I'd be scared, but I would never wake them up. Like, I remember a movie that scared me was, um, give me, let me think, 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 think. Creep Show 2. Creep Show 2, The Hitchhiker. Oh, yeah. <laughs> scared the shit out of me. Like, almost literally to the point where... Watching certain movies, I, that one really stands out. Like, watching that movie, I had to use the bathroom, and I had to have somebody, like, walk me to the bathroom, wait outside the bathroom until I came out, walk me back, and I'd finish, I would finish the movies, and, like, yes, they would scare me, but I always wanted more. Like, I always wanted to watch them. It, I think at the time, it was more so to fit in or be cool with the big kids, you know what I mean? Sure. And sure. it just went from that to a love of just horror to where, after a while, you know, like, we my mother would let me rent movies like me and my younger brother rent movies or when we had friends over or cousins and all that stuff over or um going to my cousin's houses and all that stuff friends houses birthday parties we have at least one horror movie for the weekend and it just grew like it literally just, it really just grew more and more and more to the point to where i mean now i'm an adult doing a podcast about it <laughs> I did over 100 epi- over 130 episodes for it and it's just i don't i, I don't see myself stopping and I, did, I love it so much. It's cool because, I mean, this genre right here, just horror alone, not only made me start a podcast, but I've reached out to so many awesome people and connected with so many awesome people, met so many awesome people. And across the world, too, not just, like, in the U.S. Like, I've had people on from – I've had a guy on from Australia, the U.K., and Canada, which I know Canada's a lot closer than those places, but still, that's cool. Like, I never thought, when I started this podcast, I'll say I never thought that would happen. It never, ever crossed my mind. Like, I'm going to have people from outside of the country, let alone outside of my state, because I was thinking it was literally going to be, like, just me and my friends and, you know, my cousin here and there. My brother comes on and, you know, just people that I personally knew just coming on talking about movies and it ended up being a whole bunch. It ended up growing into something a lot bigger than that, and now it's just, like, I love it. I wish this was like my nine to five because my <laughs> nine to five just takes up too much damn time. <laughs> uh, <definitely. laughs> more productive. No, that's awesome. But yeah, um, yeah, like I, it's it's so crazy. It's so crazy how horror connects so many freaking people, and it's so crazy how, I mean, not too crazy, I guess, but how friendly the whole everybody in horror is. Like, yes, you have your assholes, of course. That's what anything but for the most part everybody i've connected with horror wise is has been amazing from the indie scene on up it's just been amazing i'm just like this is this is beautiful this is cool who would have thought yeah you know i remember when i was a kid so you know speaking of childhood again Mm -hmm. i I also was a big stephen king fan and i would write you know my own kind of horror stories and stuff and it's probably like third or fourth grade uh I remember, you know, the, the principal called me into the office and they had a big meeting with me and my mom and they were really worried. They're like, oh my God, your son loves horror so much. He's writing all these stories. We're afraid he's going to become a serial killer. Wow. And I still remember this day what my mom told them. My mom literally got up, she grabbed me and she said, you know what? Fuck you. <laughs> She's like, my son has an imagination. He likes to write. He's into horror. He's not, you know, yeah. he's a great kid. He's, he's going to do well for himself, you know. And, and it's, it was so great having someone supportive like that, in, in, you know, in my life it, who yeah. understood that, hey, it's just, it's just entertainment, you know. It's, it's not going to make you crazy. It's not going to make you, you know, evil or, you know, anything like that. You know, those misconceptions some people have about horror fans, you know what I mean? 
And the the funny thing with that is, you know what that story reminds me of is, you know, the, remember the the book of scary stories? They were trying to get that. I I was watching a documentary with my wife on that. Um, maybe about a week or two ago. I got to rewatch it, but they were trying to get that banned in some schools because a lot of kids were reading it. Like kids were even sneaking and reading it at home. And well, we fight over those books. Yeah. <laughs> the funny thing is, is, it's like okay, so you want children to read, right? <laughs> when they finally find something that they're interested in, that they're reading. Now you want to ban that because it's horror, because you think it's scary, because it's whatever the case may be. And I'm like, you should be happy. Like, you know how happy my mother. I mean, I did like to read as a kid, but like, say, if, if, if put it this way, if my mother see me with a book, she's just gonna leave me alone. Like, he's quiet. He's not getting on my damn nerves. He's <laughs> he's not in front of the TV. He's reading a book, so I'm just going to go do whatever I feel like doing now, you know, whatever the case may be. And I feel that's how I would be as a parent. Like, hey, he's reading it's my book of scary stories. He's reading a horror book. That's cool. Fine. And, yeah, they made, like, a big thing out of it. And I know some – I think some places did ban it. I don't remember the whole thing. I would have to rewatch it. But your story reminded me of that. I'm just like, okay, so – your teacher's going to come to your mother and say, yeah, your son's pretty much, yeah, your son's doing all of his work. Like, he's doing all the writing assignments like he's supposed to, but he's writing horror. Like, yeah. Okay. And? <laughs> <laughs> How's his grammar? Oh, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And he's doing his work, right? He's not a disruption in class? No. Oh, okay, well, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm pretty sure I was only a third grader, you know, reading a thousand page novels by Stephen King. You know? <laughs> but still, though, that's that's great. I mean, I don't remember what but I think it was White Fang. I know it's not horror, but it was like White Fang. I was reading neither the between the third and the fifth grade. My teacher brought me out to the hallway. She was like, Aaron, do you like you can read this book? You understand it? I was like, yeah, I, lo I like I do enjoy reading. It's just. I didn't say this at the time, but I, as I got older and older, I realized I really do love to read, but the corny ass books they give us in school, it's like, I have no interest. So I'm going to just <laughs> kind of skim through it. You know what I mean? You, you do the short shit and do the, you know, because you have to take a test on it and kind of just wing, wing it with the test. But it's like, if you give me something I'm interested in, as far as like a reading assignment or a writing assignment and let me kind of do it how I want to do it, I'm going to knock it out the park. But if you're giving me something I'm not interested in, which is bad in a sense, of course, but at the same time, I feel as educators, if you want to educate children, you figure out a way to make them interested in that subject, no matter what it is, figure out a way to make them interested in it. They'll grasp it. And they'll not only will they learn it, they'll be interested in it. They'll practice it. They'll grasp it a lot better and they'll retain it versus, For sure. okay, let's put a bunch of squares on the board and let's figure this out. <laughs> like, you know, like, what, what is this shape and these corn, all that other up stuff. And I'm just like, no, that, that no, that doesn't work for me. <laughs> you do something that we're interested in that makes sense to us and it's still the right answer you're still doing the same formula or same writing assignment whatever the case may be we'll stick to writing and reading same reading and writing assignment it's just i'm reading this book they're reading this book we're interested i'm interested in this i'm gonna do the writing assignment on it and you can grade me on my grammar and all that other stuff you can grade me the same way as if i did this stupid book you wanted me to read so you know i'm not gonna read it's just funny how that works man and it's horror is such a great thing i mean you got books you got the audio books you got the tv shows you got the cartoons you got movies. Like you have so much to pull from. Mm -hmm. And it's so crazy too. I mean, it starts from childhood. You could say something as simple as like Scooby-Doo, Are You Afraid of the Dark, Goosebumps, to Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street, Terrifier. And then, which we, got, we have to get into this, all the indie <laughs> stuff, which I could see you yourself do. Oh, yeah. Which I think is amazing. I haven't checked. I haven't got a chance to check your workout yet, but I definitely want to. But I just love, I love indie. I have so much respect for indie because I look at myself. I know a podcast, but it's like an indie thing, and it's like, it's pretty much on us. Like, <laughs> as far as like this, like everything in here. Yeah, my wife might help me get some of the stuff, of course. But I mean, as far as like, I don't have anybody. Like, I don't have a machine paying for my equipment. I don't have a machine sharing my episodes and all that like that's all on me and then it eventually grows into friends that you make fans that you can say that'll share and all that stuff but that's pretty much it i still don't have that big machine behind me like okay well you recorded this in this studio we're gonna mix it down we're gonna clean it up we're we're gonna do the all you have to do is sit down and record we're gonna do the rest we're gonna make sure you have ads and make sure you get paid i, I wish to an extent i wish the money part yes 
but it, I love it though, man. So like, what got you started into indie? So, um, well, I think like a lot of people, you know, I, I grew up loving special effects and all that. And so I kind of wanted to be a mini Tom Savini. I think like a lot of us do when we're kids. Mm -hmm. And so I first started out doing special effects, uh, nothing very good for, for a friend. He, he was making short films at the time. And, uh, I, I, you know, eventually he let me grab the camera and kind of start uh, filming some of my own shorts with it. And so I kind of slowly got the bug to make movies and make shorts. And uh, eventually I did go to college to study uh, digital video production and did the whole college thing and, uh, you know, continue to make short films, continue to do that kind of stuff. Uh, eventually I ended up working in the industry. I worked for a 3D company. Uh, converting, you know, big Hollywood films into 3D. But my heart was always with indie horror, specifically shot on video horror films. And I started a website and this uh, project uh, probably around 2010 called uh, SOV The True Independence. And the website was sovhorror.com. Mm -hmm. And the whole idea was I wanted to preserve the history of shot on video horror films. Because uh, this was kind of before there was really a resurgence of them. And still a lot of people kind of shit on them, you know. They kind of had a bad rap, if anything, people liked them because they were so bad, they're good type mentality. Yeah. And to me, I mean, that was the stuff that inspired me to even, you know, shoot stuff. You know, I was watching movies by the Polonia Brothers and Todd Sheets and these these indie guys that were J.R. Bookwalter, these guys who were, who were making films. You know, it, it seemed more obtainable that I could make a shot on video epic versus a 35 millimeter feature film, you know? Yeah, yeah. And so um, we started this web series and um, while I was working on, on the project, you know, I kind of got on the back burner at times, but uh, due to, you know, life and work and- Of course. But, uh, once I started really getting back into the website hardcore, I was uh, doing a bunch of movie reviews and I had gotten a tape from this uh, filmmaker named Jay Wolfel. He's probably best known for uh, doing a uh, Demonicus, Demon Gladiator from Hell or Trancer 6, Beyond Dreams Door. He's done a lot of stuff and I interviewed him and he gave me a box of old VHS tapes. And so on one of them, I noticed there was this tape and it had a movie on it called Dead Silence which I'd heard of before. And this isn't the puppet movie a lot of people know of. This is an old shot on video movie from, I think, 89 by Hugh Gallagher, who's most notable for doing the what is referred to as the gore trilogy, Gorgasm, Garotica, Gore Horror. Mm -hmm. And uh, on this same tape, like I was really excited for that because I'd been wanting to see that movie like forever. I was a big fan of Hugh's work. But right before that was a movie called Metal Noir. And I'd never heard of it. I'd never seen it. Mm -hmm. And I throw on this tape and I start watching it. And immediately I recognized the names Hugh Gallagher, who, who was also part of this movie, as well as Charles Pinion, who's another indie film director. He made Twisted Issues, Red Spirit Lake, We Await, another really good uh, artist. And uh, I started watching this movie and it just blew me away. I just fell in love with this movie. It's kind of like, I guess the best way I could describe it is it's a mix between Hellraiser meets uh, Trick or Treat. You oh. know, it's, it's a very... It's a very bonkers, dreamlike uh, type film, and it's so much fun. And so I watched this movie, and I was like, you know, I, I wanted to do some research for the, for the website. And so I started doing research, and I realized this movie's never been released. I found in some old horror Draculina magazines talking about how it got shelved and it wasn't released. So I was like, oh, wow, you know we need to get this out there, you know? And, I, yeah. and I, so I contacted the filmmaker, and... Uh, David R. Williams, and he was really cool. He was, I think he was shocked that anyone gave a damn about this movie from, you know, 20, 30 years ago. And, uh, you know, I told him how much I loved it and how I'd love to get it out on, on DVD. And so we kind of struck up a deal. And that was really the beginning of the SOV Horror DVD label. That's I mean, awesome. that was number one. And we just, I just sent number 23 to the replicator just earlier this week. So. Awesome. Ever since then, we've just been doing them one after a time, you know. That's see, that's that's really freaking cool. That's really cool, and I mean, it's it's so crazy how again going back to how this this genre right here just even opens opens up so many avenues for for people like for you with your shot and video stuff you do, 
again, with me with the podcast, you have indie people that are making movies and just, just a bunch of different things that we all started as just a fan of these movies, just watching them. Like I never thought in a million years, it never even crossed my mind, especially as a kid going to like a horror convention and meeting these people, meeting that I never even knew about indie horror when I was a kid. I, didn't, I honestly didn't learn about indie horror until I was an adult. But yeah, just like learning all that stuff, just all this stuff, it's just like, holy shit, this is like, wow. And having this podcast actually made me open up to watch more horror movies and to get into indie. That's how I learned about a lot of the things because like I'll have guests on. There's times I'm, you know, a guest, I'll like, hey, just pick a movie, you know, if I can get my hands on it, I'll watch it and we can review it. And there's times where they pick a movie I've never, I may have heard of it, but I've never seen it. And then there's times where I've never seen it or heard of it. And then again, we have, excuse me, we have the Netflix, Hulu, Tubi, all this stuff, Amazon Prime. We have all this stuff where it's just like, there's like endless, <laughs> endless movies that we've never heard of, or I'd never heard of. I'll speak personally. And I'm just like, holy shit, there's all this stuff out here. Cause I'm so used to watching, you know, the bigger names, the Friday the 13th, all, you know, all that stuff. I don't have to go down the list really. And that's just cause that's what I was introduced to. And that's just like the people I was around. That's what they knew too was certain ones, maybe certain smaller ones here and there, but for the most part, it's like the bigger name ones sure. from the eighties on up, you know, and then it's just so crazy. It's just so crazy how like this passion grew, which I do love. And I, again, I just never thought again, I guess I could say there was never, there wasn't podcasts out back then in the eighties and nineties. <laughs> and then as far as cons go, I didn't learn about cons till about, 2012 or 2013 i had no idea there was horror conventions i think my wife found one i don't know if it was on facebook or what she seen them that was like out of state so she started doing research and found some that were closer to us and we've been going ever since between me either either be me her and my brother me and my brother or me and her both since he moved but it's i'm just like this is wow kind now i'm missing cons so much because <laughs> i've been going since it's either 2012 or 2013 I've been going to this specific one called Scaricon. Okay. And of course, because of freaking COVID, um, this will be the first year we didn't go to like any cons. We'll go to at least one a year, I'll say. And it's just, it feels so weird. I'm just like, I miss my con friends and family. Like I miss everybody. I miss rubbing elbows. Seeing this, It's cool seeing the same fans there and seeing new fans there. It's cool seeing some, you know, some of the same celebrities there too. Like that doesn't even bother me. It's cool seeing the new, you know, other celebrities there too, but it's just cool being in that atmosphere. I love that freaking atmosphere. Now, are you a big con goer or were you a con goer before pre-COVID? Yeah, so I've, I've been to quite a few cons. Uh, it's been a, quite a while since I've been to one. It, it is kind of funny because, you know, the, the company's only been around now for just a little over a year. Mm -hmm. And I was really excited about, you know, doing the con circuit. And, and this time, instead of being a... a, a you know, just a fan actually getting a table and, and trying to sell our products and talk to people about, you know, shot on video movies and stuff like that. So it was a pretty big bummer. Yeah. When, you know, the virus kind of came around and kind of put a, a hamper in that for a while, you know? Yeah. Oh, it, it freaking sucked, man. I was like, what yeah. the, why COVID? Why, why now? <laughs> <laughs> why, why now, man? But it, I'm with you though. Like I actually, I brought my podcast to a con twice so far and being on the other side of the table is so freaking fun. But like with me, we had to do, um, what the hell do we call those things? We had to moderate panels. Oh, okay. I wasn't able to be at my table that much, Yeah. <laughs> which I'm not complaining at all. Don't get me wrong. I'm not complaining because they gave me a two free passes, two free media passes for the weekend and a table for the weekend and you got usually have to pay for all that stuff so i'm like okay that's cool so i just had to like if it was me my wife and my brother for example i would have to get a pass a media pass for him get an extra chair for him and then i always paid for power because i'd bring my my laptop my mixer like i'd bring my setup so i can record there if if we had time to <laughs> but it, it's just like it's so much oh my gosh i miss it so much like i, I love just sitting there talking with other fans i actually got to um Ken Sagos actually sat with me for about a half hour at one of the cons at Scaricon actually. And just, we were talking horror and just chit chatting and stuff for a podcast, which I thought was amazing. I was so like happy about it. And just so like, what's the word I'm looking for? Thankful because 
he didn't have to do that. Like I asked him, I was like, I would love to get you on my podcast. I, I just said, I didn't say today. I was like, I'd love to get you on my podcast one day. And I was explaining to him what it was. And he was like, okay. He's like, well, he's like, we could do it today. He's like, where are you at? And I told him where I was set up at. He's like, yeah. he was like, just come get me in about a half hour. He's like, I can give you about a half hour of time. And I had to come back to my table. I was like, cool. So I did exactly that. And he kept to his word. And it was just it was like, I had such an amazing time, like stuff like that. You don't see, I feel like you don't get that at other types of cons. Like I had a comic con, maybe because they are bigger, maybe who knows, but I just feel like the horror conventions feel a lot more personable. And I feel everybody at a horror convention wants to be there. I feel like at a comic con and those type of cons, I'm not bashing them because I enjoy those too, but I feel it's the girlfriend or the boyfriend's into the stuff. And the other one's just going to support, you know, the other or parents are into it and they're bringing their kids because they have to, or kids are into it and their parents are kind of supporting the kids. It's like if a group goes, I'm not saying that every single group, but if a group goes, not everybody in that group is really into it. It's just more for like support versus I feel like if a horror group goes, I feel everybody in there. I'll say like, in my opinion, I want to say damn near hundred percent of the people that are at horror conventions want to be at a horror convention. They're not going just to, just because like, yeah, I'll support you. It's like, no, I just don't feel it works like that. And you can kind of feel the energy when you walk in the building. I can at least. And when you talk to the other fans and stuff, it's just, it's amazing. <laughs> it's so freaking amazing. And I'm just like, come back, please. <laughs> right, for sure. We're going to start making some love songs to the horror. You know, the, you know, they make the breakup songs and I, or when the guy or the girl's begging for their bro- girlfriend or boyfriend. It's going to be like that, but for horror con- horror conventions. Right. <laughs> but um, what was I going to ask you? So how often do you guys get like new features or new films to shot on video films to sell? Yeah. So we're lately when we first started, it was about one a month we were putting out, but now we've, we've worked our way up to two releases a month and uh, I'm trying to st- stick to that as much as I can. I mean, I am a one man company, so I literally do everything. I mean, the only things I don't do is I don't do some of the artwork um, because I'm not much of a visual artist. I am a v- v- VFX artist, though. You know, I've, I've worked on many big movies doing visual effects. That was kind of my day job for a while. But, um, yeah, so I, I'm pretty much a, a one-man show. So, you know, it, it's literally I, I do my 9 to 5, and then I sit and I spend another 7 hours every night at home working, you know, trying to get these movies out because I love them. I mean, that's one, one prerequisite. When I first started this, you know, I never thought I was going to, I never thought it'd grow to what it's grown to. You know, I thought we'd do the one release. And then the second release we did was actually a film I made, which just seemed like a natural progression to put out my movie. But um, I never thought I would start getting all these movies, acquiring them and putting them out. Uh, it kind of just started happening. And, uh, but I've always had the rule that I, I only put out movies that I like. And, uh, I've, I've sadly had to turn down movies and I feel bad turning down movies because I know how hard it is to make a movie. I know how much work and time people put into them. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I, I also feel like I want to have integrity as a company and I want to be able to stand behind my product. So, you know, um, everything we put out, you know, I, I got to love it or I'm not putting it out pretty much because it's a lot of work, you know. So it's, it's a lot of work, not only remastering the movies, you know, we usually do new uh new scans of them when we can, um, you know, remaster jobs on the audio, getting all the special features together, That's you know, awesome. these aren't hastily thrown together products. You know, we really, I spent a lot of time working on each release. So, you know, you really got to like the movie to dedicate that much of, of your time to it. You know? Yeah, no, that, that's cool. And that's respectable though. Cause you can just say I'm in it for the money and kind of every, every movie somebody throws at you like okay we'll do it boom we'll do it we'll do it we'll do it but it's like i i really want to be a fan of these movies when i put them out and i i respect that now if um can people still go and buy from the very first movie you guys did all of you you did all the way up till now or is it just kind of like a limited yeah so that was another thing i really wanted to kind of do was i wanted to stay away from limited releases because i know as a fan there's a lot of companies they do these limited releases and, you know, they'll do 100 copies, 200 copies, and then they're gone. And then, you, you know, if you wanted that movie, you got to go to eBay and pay $400 for a copy yeah. or something, you know. And so I, I definitely wanted to stay away from that model. So for the most part, actually, right now, all but one of our titles is still in print. And uh, that one title that was, that's no longer in print, 
we let people know, hey, this is only available for a certain amount of time, but we didn't do a limited quantity. So literally we made it available for two months. We advertised a lot saying, hey, it's only two months, so get it while you can. Mm -hmm. And uh, But I try to stay away from doing limited releases. So yeah, right now all of our releases are still are still available. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, that's see that. I'm not a fan of limited releases. And I'm just going to be straight up and tell you why, because I'd never get to get the movies. <laughs> yeah, same here. <laughs> but, like, I, I don't have the kind of money to where it's like, for example, the Friday the 13th, the one that just came out. Mm -hmm. I think you could still get the box set, but you can't get the lithogram and the poster. Right. And I wanted that whole bundle because I missed the one that came out a few years back. It came out in the, uh, the Steelbook Blu-ray. Right. I missed out on that. Mess that one I missed out on because I was just messing around procrastinating. This time I missed out on it because I didn't have the money and they did a limited quantities. And I'm like, yeah. why do that? Like, you know, people, either way, people are going to buy it. And I, I feel like why not just have it come out for like a year or two with the lithogram, with the poster and all that. And then after that, say, you know, there's only X amount of time left to get it. And then maybe do it without the lithogram and the poster, if that's the case, because there's so many fans of it. And what's going to happen is especially during COVID. I mean, a lot of people are out of work. That's one. Yep. And then I'm like, there's people that'll grab say five, six copies of something because they can afford to do that and then go ahead and flip it and sell it for five, six times the price a couple of years down the road, which I mean, it sucks that it happens, but at the same time, I can't be mad at it because it's like, I can't, I can be because I didn't get one, <laughs> but at the same time, it's like, if you can afford to do that and make money off of it, and profit off of it why not i guess but it does suck but i'm just saying it's i'm like that right because friday the 13th is my favorite franchise slasher franchise right. mine too <laughs> I, i'm just a huge jason fan he, and i think my biggest reason i mean besides the fact that he's freaking amazing but i think my biggest reason is because it's the one that i'm most used to because back in the day usa network friday the 13th that's coming on friday saturday sunday yes it would cut out a lot of the blood guts and boobs but you still got to see some cool things in there Mm -hmm. And then when you finally got to see it on VHS or DVD, you're just like, holy shit, hell yeah. yeah. And <laughs> that's probably why I'm so such a big fan of Friday the 13th. Had it been Nightmare on Elm Street coming on those days or Halloween coming on those days to where it was like a marathon for a weekend, maybe I would have made the mistake and been a big fan of the, Not that I'm not a fan, but maybe I would have made the mistake and said those are my favorites is what I mean. But yeah, I just... Oh, man, that, 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 burn, that still bothers me to this day. I'm just like... I, I'm so mad. I'm not mad about it. Like I'm, I'm over it now, but I'm just hoping I can at least get the Blu-ray bundle. Cause I believe you could still get that just the Blu-ray bundle. If I can get one of those, I almost said I want to get two, one that I open, one that I just keep as like, you know, but sure. that's expensive. <laughs> that's well, so funny. I've, I've seen some of our titles on eBay. So there's definitely been people who've done the same with my company who have bought, they'll come in and buy five or six copies of the movie and then throw it on eBay for twice the price of what we're asking for it, which I find funny because I'm like, you know, I'm definitely, we're not Friday the 13th big, that's for sure. <laughs> some people will get it, though, because there is a lot of people who like certain movies, especially these movies that some people love getting movies they never heard of. Some people have heard of them. They just couldn't find them for years. Mm -hmm. And they're just like, holy shit, I can get this. It's how much it costs. Fuck it, I'll get it. Yeah. But um, I'm, see, now I'm the type, too. As a matter of fact, my wife went to the Dollar Tree earlier. And they had like they had Blu-rays there, like horror Blu-rays. They had Child's Play. What else was there? The newest Friday the Thirteenth, Carrie, some other. I forgot every single movie they had there. Sure. But what we'll do is like because with my podcast and stuff, I'm, I'm gonna I'm I do giveaways. So I'm gonna start doing giveaways as soon as I get to 200 YouTube subscribers. I'm gonna do my first giveaway, and it'll be like say three or four Blu-rays and maybe a random horror trinket that I don't mm -hmm. mind giving getting rid of. I actually have a box full of stuff. But it'll be, it's going to be like a mystery. What it is, it's going to be a, um, like a mystery mystery box. Like, I'll just throw, like I said, four items in there, whether it be three movies and an item or four movies, whatever the case may be. Throw it in there, figure out a way to do the giveaway, maybe like a randomizer thing, and then send it to the winner. But that's the only reason why I'll buy, like, doubles and triples of movie. I mean, I mean, like, the same exact type. Like, this is the Blu-ray, this is the Blu-ray or DVD or whatever. Sure. Other than that, as far as trying to sell them and all that stuff, it's just, I'm not saying I, it's just too much work. It really is. Like, cause I got to put it on here, do it. And like, I don't really feel like going through all that. I'd rather just, you know, and I want to build, I want to build a fan base and people love free shit. I love free shit myself. <laughs> and horror fans love what horror fan wouldn't love to get a bundle of free movies or just some free cool things. They didn't have, even if they have it, Hey, I have this movie, but 
I can trade this off with somebody or I can sell it. Hey, if you want to sell it or trade it off, go ahead. That's on you. I'm just saying this is what you, you know, this is what you want. <laughs> but yeah, it's, I'm definitely gonna have to check out your. I'm definitely gonna have to check out your website though. And grab a couple of movies, maybe grab a couple to give away as well. Yeah, I could probably send you a few for a giveaway. That'd be awesome. Do you have business cards, by the way, too? Uh, I do not. No. no. I just no. I was gonna say because if you did, I'll throw those. Anything that your movies were in, I'll throw those in the box so people would know where to. Oh sure, check gotcha. it out. Yeah, I mean, we got buttons and stuff like that. I got buttons. Oh okay, okay, something like that. That would be perfect. Yeah. Well, well, we should talk about that then, man. That'd be for awesome. Sure, for sure. <laughs> Because, again, people love free things, and there's a lot of horror. I'm not going to say true horror fans, because I don't care if you just like the Hollywood movies or you like everything in between. You're a horror fan. You're a true horror fan. Sure, right? sure. But you know what I mean? Those ones that go dig deep in the crates, like you or me, that are just uh-huh. like, what the fuck? A vampire kiss it, fighting a wolf? Right. I mean, that's, that's cool. What the hell? Killer spinach? I, I want to see this. Like Some right. people will be like, what the, I'm not watching that. My wife, for example, she's I'm not watching that shit. No. I'll go, I'll watch it. You don't have to watch it, but I'll watch it. Yeah, but one yeah. of our most popular titles is a movie called The Dingleberries, which is uh, uh, Space Turds. I would watch that. <laughs> I want to watch that. You know what's funny is because you, you sent me the picture. I was trying to pick out like what pictures. I was like, I got to figure. I just want to find some. And I seen that. I started laughing. <laughs> I was like, I want to see this fucking movie, <laughs> Dingleberries. Yeah, and, our hot sellers and it's all it, it's all based on the title and that poster i think <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome yeah there's a lot of titles in there i'm just like oh there's some cool shit there's some interesting stuff in there there was the one what was it called oh fuck i forgot now bloody something with the chicks uh, on the front oh uh bloody red lips of blood maybe yes and i was like okay it said violence and nudity i was like yes yeah. <laughs> this sounds like something I would want. I have no idea what happens in this movie but you had me at violence and nudity <laughs> so I'm definitely going to have to check these out man I'm definitely going to check these out and I'm looking at the titles here Mr. Ice Cream Man all these here I'm like yes 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 Mr. Ice Cream Man I mean that was uh, that was such an honor getting that one because I, I mean I remember renting that one when I was a teenager and just falling in love with that movie it's re- originally released by Dead Alive Home Video Awesome. You know, the company that put out uh, Meet the Feebles, famously, they were the company that first put out Meet the Feebles in VHS in the U.S. Mm-hmm. And uh, just a huge fan of that movie. And I knew Mac and Jim who made the movie. I hit them up and, you know, I I, I felt they were going to turn me down because I couldn't offer much money, you know. <laughs> and and uh, thankfully, though, they, they saw my passion. They knew how much I loved the movie. And they're like, let's do it, Tony. That's and so and that one, that's one of the releases I'm probably most proud of as well because we worked really hard. I think that one took us about seven months of, you know, putting everything together and remastering and the whole deal. And the, the DVD looks beautiful. I mean, it, it, I almost wanted to put out a Blu-ray of it because it looks that good. Wow. But, you know, the thing is, though, it's, these are shot on video movies. One reason that I don't put them out on Blu-ray is because you have to upscale to make them HD. And I just feel that's... You know, takes it takes away. You know, you're not going to get better quality. Technically, when you upscale a movie, you're really degrading the quality. So, mm-hmm. you know, I, I figured I want to put these out in the best quality. It's it's about putting out the best release. You know, not about making the most money. So, I respect that. I respect that a lot, and I I can't wait to. I'm actually checking out your website right now. I can't wait to uh, start purchasing purchasing. Wow purchasing Aaron you know how to talk some of these movies cool. this is a nice th- yeah man this is awesome 15 bucks you hear this people 15 bucks 13 bucks for these movies this is not bad these are fair prices I'm I, in my mind I didn't want to say it out loud but I'm thinking like these are probably like 30 or 40 dollars a piece this is awesome this I is want to make sure to keep stuff you know like I said, I'm a fan first and foremost, so it's about, you know, keeping it affordable so people can easily buy them and, and price doesn't scare people away, not doing the limited, you know. You know, I come from, too, I, I, I'm a, a musician as well. I used to play in a bunch of punk rock bands in my teenage mm-hmm. years, in my early adult years. So I feel I kind of bring that uh, punk rock mentality to my DVD label where, you know, it is really ultimately about putting out cool movies and sharing them with people. You know, and and not 
not trying to rip people off or not trying yeah. to be something we're not, you know, just kind of putting out cool movies that I like and hopefully sharing them with other people who would enjoy them as well. And I respect that. Like, I really respect that a lot. I'm actually, you know, I'm, I'm going to share the screen just so I can show this for the viewers. There's going to be no sound, so. One second. Are you seeing a picture of me smiling? Are you seeing the um, your site? Yep, I see the site. All right, people. So you go on this website right here, and you get – look. I mean, there's just so much awesomeness on here. These freaking movies. Yeah, and we also do reviews. We have some uh, – we do videos. You know, we, do, we try to do other uh, – Shot on video related content as well for fans to kind of enjoy. Dingleberries. <laughs> <laughs> I had to point that one out. But it, I, I, li I like this. I like it a lot. And I like how everything is, is like easy to find, easy to navigate, which as, you know, watchers, listeners, you guys can see this. Well, listener, watchers. And then, like I was saying with the movies, you go hit buy now. Oh, do it again. I missed it the first time. <laughs> I mean, 15, 13, that's not bad with the prices at all. Six, like that's awesome prices. That's very, very affordable. And this is not just through COVID. This is all the time, right? Like this is yep. 18 yep. bucks. And we do sales all the time too. So we'll do, uh, this you is know, crazy. I like to do $10 daily deals. Mm -hmm. So uh, for people, if they follow me on Facebook, you know, periodically I'll just throw – one of them up on sale for 10 bucks or even sometimes $6. You know, we, we try to do nice little sales here and there as well. That's very awesome. Now, do you guys, do you sell outside of the U S as well? Or is it strictly U S? Yep. yep. Oh, you have uh, fans all over the world. We sh we've sh got fans in Austria, Germany, the UK. That's big. That's yeah. big right there. Cause I know there's sometimes there's some things just because of shipping costs. It's limited to the U.S. Yeah. So with doing that right there, it's going to help a lot of people want to go check. Like, oh, let's check this out. That's awesome. We, we, we also we deal with some uh, third-party vendors. So we uh, Diabolic DVD has some of our titles. Okay. We work with uh, Strange Vice, who's out of the U.K. with some of our titles. So uh, it's, I mean, it's yeah, smart. There. It's smart business-wise, and it's awesome as a horror fan being – I mean, I'm in the U.S. I'm in New York, but – I'm sure someone, you know, across the pond, so to speak, would be like, holy shit, I can actually get these movies. I don't have to yep. <laughs> wish that I can have these. I can actually get them. Right. That's, that's really cool, though, man. That's I like what you guys – I really love what you guys do, and Thank I you. definitely can't wait to start making some purchases and uh, grabbing some things to do some giveaways for some of these horror fans out here, which – would I, well, like I said, I know I do a mystery box, but maybe if me and you work on something, which, yes, people, you're going to hear this, maybe that would be, like, one of the boxes that I'll be like, okay, you'll know what's in this. You'll at least know that something from this is going to be in here, maybe not what movie, but you'll know something from this is going to be in here sort of deal and get people to check out, you know, listen, you got to go there, you got to like their page, you got to do this, you got to do that, and sure. then show proof, and you'll be entered. <laughs> something. <Right. laughs> but, yeah, I... I just can't get over the like. I went to the site because you know you sent it. I know you sent it to me earlier, but I was out and about, and I finally checked it out. And I'm just like, holy shit, the price! Like the price alone. Because again, you go look at some movies, which I'm not knocking anybody because I understand, especially if it's a limited quality. Yeah, limited quality quantity. I get where it's like, okay, I gotta charge this much because of this, or I had to char I had to charge this much because I had to pay these people this much. I have to make some sort of, I have to at least break even. I yes, yeah. obviously make a little profit, but I have to at least, at least break even. So I get it, but I, I love what you guys are doing, man. I think it's amazing. And I want to thank you guys. Like that's awesome. Again, as a, <laughs> as a, a broke horror fan, <laughs> this is just like, yeah, I, I'll, I can get some of these movies now. Not right there a second, but I can, you know, order some of these movies and, It'll be awesome. I can't wait. And which means I'll have to do a podcast in these movies as well, <laughs> which will also be awesome. And I'll probably have to have you on for at least one of them for one of these movies I get from your well, I'd be happy to. Be happy to awesome, man. Awesome. Is there anything else you want to discuss or plug or anything or? 
Yeah, so I mean, uh, just if people are interested in checking it out, you know, there's a website, SOBHorror.com. Like I said, other than movies, we got reviews up there of other movies. We have a web series called SOB The True Independence, uh, which is pretty much interviews with, uh, you know, SOV alumni, filmmakers, actors from those movies from their, you know, 80s and 90s. And, um, you know, a lot of just different content up there. Um, there's a podcast, the SOBs Who Love SOV, that I'm part of. Oh, uh, cool. B-Movie Madness is another reviewer that we kind of work with sometimes. So, you know, it's, it, it, I, I try to make the site, you know, not just about, you know, promoting our label, but just promoting the genre in, in, in the genre in, in a whole, you know, because I'm yeah. just a huge fan. I'm a fan of first and, and you know, that's always been the most important to me with, with the label and stuff. And, uh, but if anyone wants to, yeah, check that out. And also you can, uh, people can find me on Facebook. I'm just a uh, Tony Massiello, uh, pretty friendly guy. <laughs> I'm more than happy to talk people, uh, especially if you, you know, people want to talk about shot on video horror movies. I always love to, to talk about those, but just horror in general, you know, and I'd like to help promote movies. And if anyone, you know, uh, is possibly interested in distribution, I, I'm always looking for movies. So, uh, you know, hit me up. I'll check out your movie. And, uh, you know, yeah, just uh, got to love horror. And, I, and, and I, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just very appreciative to, to get to come on your show here and, and get to talk to you and your, uh, your audience there. I'm appreciative of you coming on here because, like I said, man, I, I freaking love this genre. And... The way I look at it, too, I appreciate I love when people do come on here, but I look at it like if I don't get a guest on here as far as somebody to review a movie or to come on for an interview, I have nothing. So I am just as humble and everything else as everybody else. It's awesome because I'm like, hey, people want to come on my little show. This is cool. This is cool as shit. Yeah. It's even it's getting to the point now where people are reaching out like, hey, I heard your show. I'd love to come on. That I'm like, yes, please. Let's let's set something <laughs> up. And this is why it needs to be my nine to five. So I can be doing this all day, Monday through Friday and, you know, <laughs> work overtime even. <laughs> There's a lot of work doing this type of stuff, you know, it's, it, it's a lot of work putting anything together. You know? It really is. And I mean, more, more so the editing. I mean, I'm getting, I'm learning more editing, but just as far as even if it's just doing like little simple things, as far as like, say, if you don't do any edits, you just like, I'm for the most part, I just put the episodes out, but I will do like little intros and stuff like that. Mm hmm. And just that and then exporting it is what takes the time. <laughs> the export time <laughs> is what takes the time. So it's like, yeah, I can edit. Like, I can edit some quicker than I can record something at times because, I'm again, I'm still learning. Like, I don't – and I'm just doing a podcast where I'm talking. It's not like I have, like, a movie that I'm trying to edit. I do want to learn more editing for my show. But, again, it's – that that process getting it out there and all that stuff that's what takes the time mm -hmm. to up from exporting it from from out of you know my pro my editing program to save it onto my computer from that to uploading it to youtube that right there could be about two to three hours <laughs> just for one episode and i'm just like there's days where i'm like i want to just bang out like 10 episodes just get them all edited and put up there at least in the queue so i don't have to worry but then i'm like okay Six hours later, two episodes up, I'm done with this. Let me turn this shit off. <laughs> As you know, I'm sure you get you get where I'm coming from though. And don't get, like I love every aspect of it, but it's just those times. Like I'm like, cause if I'm like say if I'm exporting a video with the program, I can't do anything else to another video until I'm ex done exporting from that program. And now when I'm, when I'm uploading to YouTube, I can go out and export another video or do whatever to another video. But it's like, say if I'm exporting from that and then uploading to YouTube, then it's still. So some days what I will do is like I did it the other day. I just have to upload to YouTube. I did like three or four because they, they actually went pretty quick. I did like three or four that day as far as exporting. So then whenever I have free time, maybe Sunday before football, I will upload those ones to YouTube and then kind of try to start doing it like that. But. We'll see what we'll see what happens, man. It's 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 again. I need to just make a bunch of money doing this, my passion, and just you know stop my nine to five job. Not complaining, <laughs> but just stop that, and I could you know put it into our passions. People would be a lot happier if they, if everybody can make money off their passions, and I mean a true passion. I don't mean like if you're a criminal doing like stealing shit. I mean like a true passion that's not gonna hurt anybody 
anyone or anything. You're just like me podcasting, watching horror movies, doing these type of interviews and all that kind of cool stuff. You, what you do with your, with the shot on video stuff. I'm sure if tomorrow, for whatever reason, there was like, listen, this is what you'll be making from now on shot on video per year. Let's just say $150,000 a year. You can quit your day job <laughs> if you wanted to. I don't know what you make. I'm not trying to get in your I'm just you know, throwing that number out there. I have to say, though, I'm one of those lucky people. I absolutely love my day job. So, oh, okay. Well, yeah, I actually, I, I, you know, uh, I, I actually, I work for uh, a company called Riff Tracks. I don't know mm-hmm. if you're familiar with them, but it's the guys who used to do Mystery Science Theater 3000. It's- and so... Yeah, I, I work for them. So pretty much we, we make in fun of bad movies and we put out a new bad movie every week. And uh, that's it, awesome. it's a blast. I mean, I grew up watching Mystery Science Theater Mystery. and was a huge fan. And so to now work for them is just a dream come true. I mean, I get to go to work and laugh every that's day. So. amazing. You know, it's, it's funny you say that because actually I'll tell you this part off air. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you this part off air. Cause it, yeah, I got some cool things, but, um, but it's important to, yeah, to, you know, I, I think to, you know, I wouldn't be working in that industry if I didn't really push myself yeah. to work in that industry. And it, it, I really do feel lucky to work in, in something that I enjoy doing. And I recommend everyone, Hey, follow your dreams, man. I mean, I was a poor kid who grew up on welfare, a single mother. We had nothing, you know, and mm-hmm. I worked my ass off. And now I'm living my dream. And I truly believe anyone can do the same if they really work really hard and, and stay focused on what you want. But it's not going to be easy, you know. <laughs> it's definitely not going to be easy, you know. I typically work, even even now, with, with my full-time job, you know, with Rift Tracks, I work six days at least and 16 to 17 hours every day. I mean, my wife is constantly... It's time to stop, Tony. <laughs> yep, yep. You're over for the day. You're getting kind of loopy and crazy because you're working too long. Mm-hmm. I know. get it, man. And I, I 100% agree with you on that. And I just feel like you have to find the right time, of course, with that stuff. And, I mean, for me, I'm working from home right now, so I can still stick with my passion as far as, like, I can watch horror movies throughout the day. Like I, I have a segment on here now called on my YouTube channel called what the fuck the surf 30 just watch. And it's random movies right now. It's, I've been doing it from Tubi and Amazon prime. It'll be three movies I've never seen may or may not have heard of. And I'll just three movies and I'll just hit play on one. And I won't be like watching it, watching it cause I'm working. Well, you know, you can like peek up and you can listen to it at the very least kind of like peek up. And then what I'll do is when I'm when I do my video for it, I'll just say like, you know, this was the best movie, this was the second best, this was the third best. This is my favorite cover, this is the second best cover, this is the third best cover, unless it's a tie or whatever the case may be. I don't really re- I don't review them because I say reviewing for the podcast. And I um if there's like a certain movie that I really did enjoy, I will say, you know what, I will do this on a podcast at a later date. Any other movie that people want to see, me and a guest review, me and my co-host, or me and them, if they want to come on and review it, they can just leave it in the comments. Like, hey, I would love to review this movie with you. One that you said you hated, of course. And I'm cool with that, too. So I do that. And it just kind of keeps, like, I, I'm able to do that. But I just, again, maybe one day, man. I'm not going to say it can never happen because podcasting is really blowing up and growing. Maybe one day that'll happen to where I'm just like, okay, got to go to work. Time to go up in the attic and... uh <laughs> <laughs> turn on my turn on my computer and hit record. Right. You never know, man. But it's just such a it's just such a passion, and that's one thing that I'm happy that it's that I still have that same passion, maybe even a bigger passion from day one to however many days I've been doing this up to today, only because of how much I've seen it grown and how much people have gained an interest in it. I would still be doing it either way, but it's just one of those things that kind of pushes you more because it's like people are entertained by this. So it's going to drive you more to keep being entertaining and trying to do more things, newer segments and all this other stuff. And it, again, at the end of the day, it's so much fun. I've met so many awesome people, including yourself. I know I'm going to meet so many freaking more. And yeah, I mean, there's really no reason to stop. <laughs> there's no reason to stop. It keeps me busy. It keeps me sane. Right. So to speak. But again, man, thank you so much for coming on. I had a great time. This was fun. We will definitely be doing this again. You're going to see him again. Well, we'll just some movies and, uh, yeah, if you want me to back on to, to chat some movies, we can definitely do that. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Definitely, man. And again, if you want to plug your stuff one more time, go feel free and then I'll plug mine and this episode, but I'm going to talk to you for like two minutes after if that's okay. Yeah. 
So yeah, once again, just sovhorror.com. We have over 20 movie releases. I mean, tons of great stuff. I mean, Death Out Lantern, Stoinky Beach, Purveyors of Blood, Bloody Red Lips of Blood, Backyard Gore, Zombrella's House of Horrors, Natasha Knighty's Boudoir of Blood. I mean, the list goes on. Tons of great horror films. And uh, so sovhorror.com and then also Tony Massiello on Facebook. And uh, yeah, hit, hit, hit me up. <laughs> Yep, awesome, awesome, and horror fans, and this goes for you too, for this first part right here, I have a Horror with Search 30 group, and this is for anybody and everybody, horror fans, anybody and everybody, share anything and everything horror related, including your own projects, that includes like with your sovhorror.com, podcast, YouTube channels, as long as it's horror, it's 100% welcome in the group, if it's not horror, it's going to be deleted. I'm not sorry for that either, because that's, that's, that's like my only, honestly, that's my only rule for the group. You can post anything you want in the group, as long as it's obviously like not racist or sexist, not hate speech, and it has to be horror. That's it. Th those are easy guidelines to follow, which people have been following them, but I'm just saying, like, that's real simple to follow. Right. But yeah, so feel, please, man, feel free to post your stuff in the group, your, your cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. stuff. Your YouTube, anything, as long as it's horror related, it's 100% awesome. It's 100% cool. I have a Facebook page called Horror with Search Story that's strictly for the podcast. It's where all my episodes, that's where I drop them as far as on Facebook. I share them in there specifically so it's easy for fans to find, for you guys to find instead of having to scroll through the group of a bunch of crazy memes and all kinds of other <laughs> whatever else is in the group that's random. So that's it's only it's for that. And then once cons and stuff come back and once I have new con, like new things coming out for me personally, <laughs> I can post it on that page and you guys will be able to see it a lot easier versus the group. Cause again, the group, you know, has more action because everybody's allowed to post in the group. Um, I have a Twitch channel, horror underscore with underscore sir underscore sturdy. And on that channel, I, me and my brother will smoke, drink and play video games, like mainly horror games. And we're two 34 year old men talking like we were 15, 16. So you can only imagine how the conversations go. And what we laugh at, especially when you're smoking and drinking. <laughs> Which, but we're staying in the house. We're staying out of trouble. We're just playing PlayStation 4. Like big ass kids. <laughs> so, and it, but it, yeah, I mean, we do that. Um, I have my YouTube channel, Horror Research 30, which you can find. You'll find this episode and many other episodes as well as, as I was saying, what the fuck the Search 30 just watched. I have another segment that's actually dropping. Well, it'll be out by now. But this Sunday, I'm telling you called um oh, what is it scary tales of search 30 and that's where me and a guest will review a short film review a short film without any spoilers and the short film has to be like 45 minutes or less we'll review it we won't spoil it and that's going to be dropping every sunday as of right now at 11 i did two episodes so 11 and 11 30 if i do multiple episodes um what else do i have Oh, email. If you ever want to be on this podcast with me, shoot me an email, horrorwithsir.sturdy. Again, that's horrorwithsir.sturdy at gmail.com. If you're someone who just listens to audio podcasts, I'm on Spotify, Google Play, Podbean, iTunes, and every other one that's sprinkled in between. I will tell you guys this. Yes, follow me on there. Listen to me on there. But there is some video content now that you will only be able to see on YouTube. Well, you'll only be able to see it on YouTube either way, but you'll only be able to see or slash hear it on YouTube <laughs> because... It's a YouTube video, but um, yeah, so definitely follow me everywhere. You can follow search 30. Just do it. You're going to get some funny content at the very least. You're going to be entertained. I'm going to promise that. Cause I think I'm an entertaining person. I know I'm an entertaining person. I know I'm funny. My wife might not say I'm think I'm funny, but I know <laughs> I'm funny. So yeah, please follow me all there. And one more time for my email, horror dot 30 at gmail.com. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for listening. And as always, I'll see you. We just hit stop.